Hello, welcome back to Me Plus You Is Us. Hi, and welcome back to Me Plus You Is Us. <laughs> this is another video for you. <gasps> yes, and this time... Oh, my name is Elaine. And I'm Kwame. <laughs> I'm pulling Elaine back because she tends to want to go over the mic. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But anyway, we're back with another video. And uh, we're talking about... Uh, Raising an interracial child and building community, and what we've experienced or how it's been so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How has it been so far? <laughs> <laughs> well, so far, um, I've realized that, well, we did talk about it in one of our videos that, yeah, the, the, the th things that have surprised us the most about um, becoming new parents. It's how the people around you also change mm -hmm. to fit. So it's more like the universe um, taking care of you once the baby comes in. And the community has been one that has not been forced. That's one yeah. thing I'm, I'm really happy about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And one thing I'm also really happy about is the fact that everybody around us is very um, open-minded, very empathetic, uh, understanding, mm -hmm. you know, um, also, respecting boundaries and not going over. If, if you do tell them that, oh, no, I don't do this or we don't do this this way for the baby, or we prefer that if you're going to handle the baby or do this with the baby, you do it this way. They don't yeah. take offense. Like, they are really um, happy to just um, Yeah. Learn. That's just a general um, overview of how I feel about what we've experienced yeah. so far. I don't know if it necessarily relates to interracial. I think it's just more be, being fresh parents. Yeah. And how people around you uh, act with. I think for like raising a baby, I mean, he's now three months in two cultures, so he won't remember a lot. But I think for us, it was nice that we've had some time in Netherlands and then now we have our time in Ghana. Yeah. Mm, and there's, there are differences, I think. In, like, in Netherlands, you have the culture that you visit, like, the baby individually. Mm, the most gifts are, like, fun gifts, like toys. Yeah. Well, here in Ghana, people really, like, put together... Functional things functional, you like, need. like, diapers, wipes. Um, uh, bod body lotion, soaps. Yeah, which I really appreciate. Yeah, so um, here, yeah. As she's saying, people come with things that you would need and use. Yeah, we actually use all the gifts that people gave us here yeah, in Ghana. That's, <laughs> it's really that's, nice. <laughs> that's the beauty but of it. But it's a one. good like balance because then we have some um, books and toys from Netherlands. and then um, We have the very practical things that we need to use on a day-to-day -day from Ghana. Yeah, even though well, people sometimes splurge with toys. But like, Ghana is mostly functional, but uh, it's nice. Yeah, that's, I think that's because um, the general, I mean, babies are expensive. That's worldwide. But Ghanaians go on the tangent of they know how much people usually cry or complain about, whoa, I've got so much baby food, or whoa, do you know how much mm. diapers cost? Or, you know, yeah, especially they, now. Yeah, they think of that and they think that, okay, if I'm bringing just a little bit of that, yeah. then if somebody else is bringing another bit, then it's enough if you compile that to yeah. get a lot to yeah. use for a few uh, months. Yeah, and I think one thing we also did intentional is that the baby has a Ghanaian godparent and a Dutch godparent. Yeah. Um, because we think it's important for him to have, like, godparents in the first place. Because I don't think the baby should learn everything from us. <laughs> yeah. Because we also don't know everything. Uh, so that is... These are his people, like, if he yeah. has anything in his life and he wants to discuss. Or and besides the, the fact that it's, uh, I mean, we're not the only people going to raise a baby. It's also that we are um, uh, from two cultures. So mm -hmm. geographically, if we're present in Ghana, or even if the godmothers are both in Netherlands or wherever they find themselves, he has two places he can be or can go, Yeah, you know. So if geographically we're here, his godmother is here. If geographically we're there, has a godmother in the Netherlands. And it, it works that he has these two people in his life to take care of him besides family yeah. and um, 
close relatives who are also in charge of his well-being. Yeah, and I think for us it will be difficult to understand how it is for him to grow up like in between two cultures and also being Ghanaian and being Dutch. Um, that like that blend we will never really understand. But I do think, uh, fortunately, or but we didn't really force it. But we have a few uh, mixed nationalities friends as well. Yeah, mm, some We're have already to have, have yeah, like community. kids. Some not yet, or some I don't know about their plans. But <laughs> yeah, I think it's it's important that it's nice that we have also people who fit in like kind of the same category as, as categories us. Categories as us. us. And him. Yeah, because it can be difficult like having two cultures, having two different races. People interact differently with yeah. it, us. Um, so it's nice to find that sense of um, things to talk about that people recognize it. And I hope the baby will also get some yeah, support in that sense. Yeah. Um, because I don't think it's easy um, growing up in two cultures. But on the other hand, there's a, such abundance. Yeah. I think that's also one thing we really consciously decided. Like, for us, there's not one way to raise the baby. So even though Dutch grandma will do things differently than Ghanaian grandma, like both ways are allowed to be there. Like, he's not only our child, it's also their grandchild. And they yeah. should also have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with him. And if that entails some Dutch ways of doing things or Ghanaian ways of doing things, he can be exposed to both and decide for himself yeah. what works. Yeah. I mean, what's, what we would hope or what we look forward to is the fact that, I mean, when they reach that stage where they're asking a lot of whys, Mm -hmm. that these people around us are able to uh, articulate the reason behind some of these um, yeah, cultural of differences. Yeah, so to give them uh, guidance because um, the whys were not... I, for one, growing up, a lot of um, the parenting styles or the, the yeah, here mm -hmm. in Ghana, you're not allowed to ask a lot of why to get a lot of explanation. It's, it's more like your parents know it's best and that was it. Yeah. So we are hoping that with how things are opening up, with how um, a newfound vocabulary for a lot of things that people go through and the fact that the world is actually becoming more and more a place for people like him, as in being interracial or having two nationalities, yeah. that they are, you know, well-equipped to answer these questions for him so that it, in his head he's not going about wondering if I belong here or I don't belong here or if I do this, yeah. this, so that he's, he, his navigation becomes rather uh, Yeah, and easier. I hope he feels that he belongs in both, but maybe he will have a preference and that's also fine. Yeah. Um, and I think one thing, I mean, for me, being like the white parent or the white mother, like it's, of course, a bit weird in a way, that society marks our baby as black. Like, that's what people see, right? Yeah. So I think for me, that's where there's a big learning opportunity because, of course, I'm aware about, like, my color whiteness versus living in a place where majority of the people are black. Um, so I'm aware of that, but I think raising a black child is going to like open up a whole new <laughs> a whole new can of worms of things to deal, to deal with, with yeah. um, both in Ghana and in the Netherlands. Um, because that was also the case when Kwame came to Netherlands and I was very, I mean, I was, how do you say, looking up, my English is a bit low, looking like closely to how people interact mm -hmm with Kwame and not all interactions are marked by race, but there were some interactions that were marked by race. And I was so surprised because I've never experienced that so up close. Yeah. And I'm not saying it's only going to be negative, but I do think there it will open me up to even a bigger awareness. Of and learning. And learning, yeah, like how to navigate these things. And 
Yeah. Because ultimately, I mean, he would go out, he would experience things, and mm-hmm. he would come and ask us, either you or me, and he would yeah. not come and ask because if something happened to him in a maybe a racially charged way mm-hmm. that he would want to find out from only um, the mother why this is happening or only the father why this is happening. Whoever is available, if you can explain to him. Yeah. So we are both tasked with um, knowing how to have these conversations. Yeah, and I, I do think we, we do have a good foundation to talk about these difficult things, like difficult encounters, because, I mean, it is a difficult conversation to have, even in your relationship, yeah. let alone with your children. Uh, but it's definitely something we need to have. And I'm, I don't know, I'm just curious to see um, how things will unfold. And I'm like, I'm sure I'll make mistakes. Yeah. But I'm ready to learn and see how best we can do this together. Um, and that's also why it's nice. We have a community of both Dutch people, both Ghanaian people, black people, white people, people from and other... people who are in the middle. Yeah. Who like, have both experiences from both Yeah, worlds. and I think it's, it's... I hope that that will help us also navigate some of these uh, situations that will be coming at us and how to do that in a kind of a centered way yeah i guess i guess we're lucky um that we're surrounded by these people i think i don't know how we attracted them but the people around us i can confidently say are people that we're happy to have in our circle and in our social space yeah but i do think so i i agree we're lucky yes so it's i mean chance is also a big part of it but we are also very intentional about how we spend our time yeah so it's also how we have grown over the years and how intentionally you check up on people and we really take our time we're careful yeah Yeah. like if it's not real like i'm not going to hang out with you like if i can talk about something that's on my mind i'm not i mean it's we can have fun and all but then the depth of the conversations and and um, possibility of learning from each other and the support you get in turn yeah i mean bouncing back is is very important and we've been able to consciously yeah um, build such a community yeah and and i think also what helps us a lot and that's also if you've watched our videos before like we we try to learn from each other and i think we're doing for me i do the same with like motherhood tricks and stuff i have a few colleagues at work who also just gave birth and um one is uh, a mix like she's dutch and congolese and the other one uh, is from togo so but she's here in Ghana for a long time. So everybody has like different tips and tricks. And I'm like, oh, are you doing that like this and like this? And, uh, and then we're comparing notes. I'm like, oh, are they doing that? Uh, are they doing that in the Netherlands? I'm like, no, I don't think so. Um, yeah. So I guess it's like you practice, you come back to evaluate, you move forward. It's, yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. yeah. But well, I guess we'll see how it goes. You can really, I mean, you can have certain principles, but yeah, I think open-mindedness is one, and open-mindedness in like open for other cultures and habits, but also open to acknowledge that we are we don't know everything. Yeah. Um, so we're open for feedback. We're open to learn from others, whether it's like our parents or our friends yeah. or colleagues who can help. Yeah, or professionals. Yeah. So, yeah, so we're really happy with that. And uh, we want to know if you're also in our situation and how it's going with um, the kind of community around your child and your family and your circles. Yeah, and, and if, if it's a conscious effort or yeah. you're struggling and if, I mean, you want to share why you're struggling and maybe we can chit chat on how. Yeah, maybe we're totally missing a few points. I mean, we're just <laughs> parents for three months now. Yeah. So everything is very fresh. Um, but so far, I'm not uncomfortable with our social circles. That's the, the part where I really am appreciative of. Yeah, I think the, the community we've grown is very diverse and, and very... Mm, there's a lot of trust. Yeah. Like, you can call each and one of them, like, okay, this yeah. was happening. Yeah. Uh, everybody's an uncle and an auntie, and <laughs> please, like, join the party. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice. Uncle and auntie that we have consciously yeah. chosen for our child. Yes. They made they made the the, the bar. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we're happy. 
Yeah. That. Okay. I think this was it for now. I'm sure this is a topic we'll like Revisit. circle back to. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> if I just like talk like a work term, let's circle back to circle back. <laughs> yes. Business developers and all the emails. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, it's work in progress. Curious about the comments and we'll catch you in the next one. Yeah. Catch Bye. you in the next one. Bye.